Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to buy properties without the use of bank financing with little or no money down. If you wanna be financially free at a young age, then keep watching this video and subscribe. Seller financing is basically when you use the seller as a bank instead of using a financial institution. And the way that it works is basically just like uh, purchasing a car on financing from the dealer what happens is that the seller will let you buy the house for typically with a down payment and then you will pay the seller slowly over time every single month you're going to be making payments to the seller and so it can be advantageous to them because instead of receiving a lump sum of cash and having to pay a lot of taxes on that they can actually get a steady income stream and monthly payments for you know depending 10 to 30 years so it can be very advantageous for people who are looking to get out of a property and stop being a landlord but actually do still want to receive passive income and continual payments over time. So let's say you have a house for $100,000 and you want to do a seller finance deal. The seller might say put 30% down which is $30,000 and pay the other $70,000. You can pay it to me over 30 years, right? And then what you'll do is that you'll find $30,000 and then buy the property with financing. The good thing about seller financing that is if you're smart, you're going to be able to position it in a way where you this $70,000, instead of it being in a personal name, you're actually going to put it under your LLC. Your LLC is your limited liability company. And the reason why that is so good to have is that in the event that you cannot make these payments anymore, instead of it going against your personal credit history, it would actually only affect the credit history of the LLC. And if it forecloses, the only thing that's going to happen is that you're going to lose the property instead of actually losing your own personal assets. Now, that's not to say that you can just do a deal under an LLC and you won't be at risk because it's actually at the time when you sign the promissory note, which is the mortgage, where that clause of whether or not you're personally guaranteeing the loan will be there or not. So it's just something to have in mind if you ever do do a seller finance deal. Imagine now that instead of taking a 30% down payment, the guy or the girl would actually take a 10% down payment. Now your down payment is going to be $10,000 and your loan balance is going to be $90,000. The cool thing about this is that given these kinds of situations, if you're able to remove the per the liability from your personal name and into an LLC or a company, you could actually go out there and raise $10,000 to do this deal. So even if you had no money, you could potentially do a no money down deal if you, if you had people who were willing to basically lend you the money. And there are different ways that you can get creative and finance the purchases of these. And let's get into a few of them. Okay, so I've listed some capital sources here. We have credit cards. Uh, I have a personal friend of mine who has over $80,000 in credit card debt and he used it to actually buy a house. And it's extremely high interest debt but um, his property is also a very good deal and so it pays for itself basically. And it's not really recommended to use credit cards for things like down payments but it's a viable strategy. Um, so, for example, you, if you had access to $10,000 in credit cards, you could put it as a down payment, use the seller financing, and then use the cash flows from the property to pay down and use your job income to pay down the credit card loan as quickly as possible. Another thing that you could use as a down payment is a student loan. That's going to be a little controversial, but student loans, at least the federally subsidized loans, actually have pretty good interest rates. They're about 4.5% and you don't have to repay them until after you graduate college so it could be an option. The third option is basically friends or family. These are going to be, you know, these can also be investors but $10,000 is not really a big amount to raise. Uh, you can start an investment club and basically get $1,000 from 10 people, create an LLC, get the $10,000, put it down, close on the house and now you basically own one tenth of a property in an LLC. That wouldn't be recommended unless you continue to grow that fund over and over again. 
because it can be a bit of a problem having that many people in one property. All right, so if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. I'll be making a video every single week about trading and investing in real estate. If you're interested in getting started in real estate in Miami, then hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM, and I'm gonna start showing you how to make money in the real estate market.